Surprisingly, that's not a clickbait title. Final Fantasy XIV truly had a hand in saving me last year, and I'll explain it all shortly. But first, I need to say there will be some very triggering discussions here relating to depression, mental health, and suicide. So if this is something you don't want to hear about, please feel free to close the video. Trust me, I don't mind at all. I honestly had an idea to do a video about Endwalker and mental health since early this year, with it going through multiple ideas in my head, and now months later, I realize it's better to just discuss it in a video. Nothing detailed or researched, simply just me and my personal experiences through this game. There was no better time to release it than during National Suicide Prevention Week, which goes from September 4th to September 10th of this year. So consider this video very casual and raw. I want to share my experiences, not for any sympathy, but if I can help at least one person by talking about what I go through, then it's all worth it. That's always been a huge driving point for me when I'm making content. Now, let's get started. I began playing Final Fantasy XIV around May of 2021 and I enjoyed it. Getting through ARR was fun, Heaven's Word got me hooked and invested even more, the same feeling lasted through Stormblood, and Shadowbringers was one of the best gaming experiences I've ever had. This world is not yours to end. This is our future. Our story. Life wasn't perfect during this time though. I was having a lot of issues with my career falling apart. I basically worked eight years having to be on call 24 seven and it was draining. And on top of that, constant stress of being alone all through COVID was starting to severely impact my mental health and I could feel myself slipping. This is something I'd noticed earlier in spring. So I spoke to my doctor and thankfully was able to get on a mood stabilizer to help it. And just some backstory on me, I struggle with bipolar disorder, which I was able to manage with coping mechanisms and knowing what to do during any manic episodes. But everything going on just took way too much energy from me to be able to safely handle it anymore. During this time, I did have interviews with other places Places, but sadly was rejected time and time again. This started to impact my health, both mental and physical, starting in the summer. Then thankfully I managed to get hired for a new job at the end of August. I was beyond excited and so hopeful about it. It sounded great. I wouldn't have to be on call all the time and had a career path completely laid out for me. But as soon as I got there, I realized it was all lies. Nothing about it was right, and I was just going to be used and made to be working insane amount of hours again. So I started applying for more places, but nothing. More rejections after really good interviews, until one day I just couldn't handle it anymore. I had one of the worst breakdowns in my life. I was terrified, but thankfully, my therapist at the time sat on the phone with me for about 30 minutes to make sure I was safe and just talk me through things. I decided then and there that I had two choices. I either let work kill me, or I quit. So I chose to quit. I had no backup plan, but savings and enough money to get me through some time while I try to find something else and work through things, so I knew I'd be okay for a bit. But it didn't help. I was in such a low place during this time, just putting a fake face on to get through the day to day while I struggled to try and actually push myself through life. This is where Final Fantasy XIV really helped me the most. It was my escape. A fantastic story that I could lose myself in for hours at a time, either streaming it or not, and feel like I was doing something good, even if it was just in a game. I probably spent a bit more time than I had wanted to talking about things outside the game, but it's a good foundation to understand the rest of this story. And now this brings me to Endwalker's release. Do as you must then, but we Scions will fight until the heavens fall, until our last breath. Playing Endwalker on launch day was an amazing experience. I was able to stream it and start powering through the MSQ the best I could, but all I was really doing was just giving me an escape from life for a bit. When I turned off stream or turned the game off, I just sat there, a depressed, anxious mess of a person. It was at this point in December that I truly did not think I would make it to the end of the month, and nor did I want to. The pain, stress, and loneliness of life, coupled with my already severely out of whack mental state and worsening bipolar symptoms, had just brought me to the lowest point in my life. You're not the only one, Hermes. Others feel sad too. You're not alone. Even with how I felt though, I wanted to at least finish Final Fantasy XIV. Unfortunately, my mental state was far too gone for me to stream much, if at all, so I didn't stream the second half of the MSQ for Endwalker, but then I finally made it to Ultima Thule. Though the curtains may fall again and again, so long as others take the stage, ever shall there be more tales to tell. So, let them bring it to a close, I say. I spent an entire day here to finish the game, and it was really hitting me hard. The loss of friends, time and time again, trying to fight against despair, but succumbing to it, just trying to push one small step further time and time again, no matter how painful things got. It was slowly starting to chip away at me and my mental state, but I didn't really start to feel it until those Alpis flowers. Those damn wonderful Alpis flowers. A flower. Yes. Upon your return, I will gift you 
a beautiful flower. That little spark of light within Medion, having the part we knew break away from the despair, stuck with me. These Alpus blooms serve as proof that this realm is not utterly devoid of hope. No more can you deny its power. No more is yours the dominion of despair. I continued through the dungeon, finally got to the Endsinger trial, and seeing the middle part of the fight, with your friends saving you and giving you enough strength to go forward, meant a lot to me. It was something I really needed. And then the cutscene afterwards started. And this is where I really couldn't handle it anymore. Seeing Medion, the pinnacle of all the sadness and depression in the universe, start crying as she realizes the world isn't just suffering. As soon as I saw this, I broke down. This was an ugly, intense crying, something I had not done in a very long time. I felt something just kind of spark back in me. Hope, desire, a future to look forward to, all the things I didn't think I had anymore. Being able to see the most horrible, depressed, apathetic being in existence actually realize there's hope and a reason to live? Why in the hell couldn't I? I can do the same thing. I can get that mindset back. I can live, and I deserve to live. What they live for? What gives their lives meaning? There was never a single answer. All those little moments that were pushing me along towards hope throughout Endwalker culminated in this moment for me, and I finally had that spark of hope. This didn't say it completely made me better, no, but it did prevent me from giving up in the worst way imaginable and get me on the path of finally healing. I'm still nowhere near, you know, better, for lack of a better term. The past year has been one of the worst of my life, and I'm still struggling, but I refuse to give up, no matter what. And I truly think I have Final Fantasy XIV to thank for that. I don't know what would have happened if I didn't have the game to focus on, and especially with the ending and Medion's whole story. Watching this cutscene will always make me tear up. It's one of my favorites from anything ever. The only thing I regret is not being healthy enough so I could have streamed it and shared my reaction with all of you. It's become one of my favorite games of all time. I play it constantly, I've made amazing friends because of it, and I love making content for it. I used to do a lot of FPS games for streams and such, but I just didn't want to deal with any more stress, <laughs> so I slowly shifted to mainly RPGs, MMOs, and action-adventure games for my content. It was a huge shift and I honestly did lose a lot of viewership, but it happens when you make a tonal shift like that. But it was worth it. I became a lot happier with content and I wouldn't change that in any way. But if there's anything I want you to take away from this, it's that you matter. And you deserve happiness and hope in your life. Never give up and never go for the worst solution. There is help out there. Support groups nationwide, friends, call centers, therapists, and even gaming. I've put a lot of links to support sites below. And no matter what, remember that you can get through it. You can still do the things you love and succeed, even if you're struggling or dealing with any form of mental illness. Hell, you can even make content if you want. Never let your depression or anxiety win. Always keep fighting it, and never give up. One day, life will fill the universe again. And Hermes will see this and smile. How, I do not know. But I do know that where there is a will, there is a way. After all, miracles happen every day. Do they not? Suicide has taken too many bright lights from this world already, and there shouldn't be any more. Thank you for taking the time to watch this, and please take care of yourself. Never stop shining bright in this world and being a beacon for others. After all, you are the warrior of light. You didn't think that I could end the video without talking about my best bro, did you? Ha! Acceptance! At long last! Just like he ended off Endwalker, he can end off this video by the being the end screen. Thanks again for watching, I truly appreciate it. Now go out there and have a love fight with your best bro at the end of the universe.